Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Adam Oster, and I am the Library of Michigan's Community Engagement Librarian, and I want to welcome you to today's uh, History Detectives Grand Rapids uh, session on what Sanborn maps reveal about Grand Rapids. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, Sanborn maps in general, uh, what their uses are for, uh, go over how you can use them for researching aspects about uh, Grand Rapids and other um, localities throughout the United States, um, as well as some techniques for utilizing them and where you can find examples of them in different uh, both print and online uh, repositories. Uh, just to tell everybody a little bit about the Library of Michigan, where I work, uh, I always like to have every one of my presentations talk a little bit about that and what it is and uh, what our purpose is, is uh, the Library of Michigan is an institution created by the state of Michigan to collect, preserve, and provide access to the story of the state and to support libraries in their role as essential community anchors. Uh, we've been around since 1828, uh, starting during Michigan's territorial days. On the top picture on the right, you can see a picture of uh, Michigan's first capital in Detroit. Uh, and that was where the State Library started uh, with a collection of 131 items and one librarian. Uh, it has eventually moved to um, the size of over a million items plus. Um, we serve state government and the state of uh, the people of Michigan, much as how the Library of Congress works at the federal level. So if you're looking for a model of what we have um, uh, made our institution to be like uh, the Library of Congress is what we have tried to uh, focus a lot of our service uh, services to be like uh, only at the state level. Like I said, we've been around since 1828, starting as a territorial library. 1837, uh, when Michigan became a state, we then transitioned to being called the Michigan State Library. Uh, we moved from Detro uh, Detroit to Lansing in 1847, uh, when the uh, state capital uh, moved to the middle of the state. Uh, we existed in uh, several different localities uh, or locations within the uh, city of Lansing itself primarily in the state capitol buildings, um, a few other different uh, buildings. Um, eventually in 1983 was when Public Act 540 created the Library of Michigan. So we transitioned from being the Michigan State Library to the Library of Michigan, you know, in part to uh, further model ourselves after the Library of Congress, also to uh, kind of transition away from a, t a name that would uh, have similarities to Michigan State University's libraries, uh, which is just down the road from us in East Lansing. And then finally, 1988 is when the Michigan Library and Historical Center opens. Uh, the bottom picture on the right shows uh, us in, uh, as well as our neighbors in uh, the other side of the building, which includes both the State Museum and the State Archives. They are on the right or east side. We are on the left or west side. So very much your one-stop shop for anything related to Michigan history, Michigan literature, uh, all different things like that. This is a picture of what the interior of the library looks like um, from the fourth floor looking down. Uh, floors two through four have open stacks that people can uh, access um, during our open hours. Uh, a rundown of some of the collections that a lot of users are typically taking advantage of when they come to our, our facility includes the Michigan Documents Collection, which is uh, any sort of document publication produced by state government, including different departments, agencies, and commissions, uh, the early joint documents during the early uh, territorial and state periods, uh, compiled uh, laws and rules, everything from your Michigan manual to uh, any reports on anything from the Gaming Commission to the uh, Board of Corrections and Charities, uh, anything that existed in state government that produced a published document, we try to have multiple copies of it. Also, the Michigan Collection, which includes a wide range of things, including newspapers, periodicals, gazetteers and city directories, plats and other maps, county and place histories, uh, cemetery transcriptions and other unpublished material. Um, we're also home to the state law library, so we have a very significant law collection. Uh, we all 
also have a rare books room, which uh, roughly is about 30 to 35,000 items divided amongst three different types of topics, uh, Michigan uh, law and general Americana with the oldest item being from 1490. Uh, we are always on the lookout for items to add to our collection. If you're interested in uh, donating materials to the Library of Michigan, you can go to michigan.gov slash library gift for more details. So now let's talk about Sanborn maps. Um, these are certainly great tools for anybody who is interested in doing research in uh, urban areas across the United States. Uh, a few details about them. Sanborn maps are detailed maps of U.S. cities and towns um, in the 19th and 20th centuries. They were originally published by the Sanborn Map Company, or we just colloquially call it Sanborn. Um, the maps were created to allow fire insurance companies to assess their total liability in urbanized areas of the United States. Um, the maps contain detailed information about the properties and individual buildings in approximately 12,000 U.S. cities and towns. Who uses Sanborn maps? Uh, a wide range of different people um, will take advantage of the information that they provide. This includes anybody from family history researchers, city planners, uh, historic preservationists, industrial archeologists, uh, uh, demographers and urban geographers, anybody who is trying to find information about a building, about a uh, area of property, um, that is within a city urbanized uh, area, um, especially trying to follow the history of, of, of property uh, and what has been on it or what has transitioned through it over the course of its history. So how do we interpret these maps? Um, like all maps, uh, Sanborn maps have their own keys and colors. Uh, varying colors are used to convey information that identifies the construction materials used in a building, uh, so, for example, brick and tile are represented with a reddish pink color. Um, additional details within the key will identify other characteristics of the structure. That's everything from the building height, uh, number of stories, uh, elevators, uh, if the buildings had them, skylights. Uh, maps are drawn at a scale of 50 feet to an inch. Um, and if you're looking for a good source for information on more details, uh, about how to use Sanborn maps, uh, the Library of Congress on their website has an about this collection uh, section that is uh, a good resource for um, even more details on, on how to use um, Sanborn maps. Other details on maps, um, they'll have the outlines of each building and outbuilding, location of windows and doors, street names, street and sidewalk widths, property boundaries, firewalls, um, natural features such as rivers or canals, railroad corridors, building use, um, sometimes even particular room uses, depending on the size and scope of the building, house and block number, composition of building materials, including the framing, flooring, and roofing materials, strength of the local fire department, uh, indications of sprinkler systems uh, as those were being added, uh, locations of fire hydrants, location of water and gas mains, and the names of most public buildings, churches, and businesses. You can often find them in where, uh, if it is a smaller town, uh, you'll have one page uh, versus larger uh, cities. They will have multiple sheets um, that are for identifying um, the different aspects of the town. Um, so for example, we on the left side here, we have Caledonia in 1896, where it just has one page that gives the layout of the few streets that were in downtown Caledonia. And then if you look like, you know, a medium sized city, uh, such as Iron Mountain up in the Upper Peninsula in 1891, uh, it had four sheets, and that's including the partial index that's on page one. Um, also note, large cities such as Detroit and Grand Rapids will have multiple volumes where each volume covers a section of that particular, of the city. When you're finding a location on a Sanborn map, uh, there's two places to uh, look for information um, as you're starting out. So for example, we have this uh, 1888 map of Grand Rapids, um, where we have both the title page and then also the index page. Using the title page, you can uh, look to see what um, 
portions of the city have been put onto the various sheets. Um, we will be in just a second looking at uh, sheet 19. If you're looking for a particular street or uh, possibly a unique building, whether uh, it's a church or a municipal building or a park or something else that serves uh, some other purpose beyond just being a residential home, um, you can also use the index in order to help determine where within the city uh, to find the sheet number uh, that you'll be looking for. Um, with the index, uh, it will also identify the specific sheets that the streets are on um, and also the specials, uh, like I said, uh, for identifying specific sheets on a building that it's on. Um, the sheet numbers on a title page indicates the corresponding sheet that the port portion of the city is on. So these are just some examples that are from the 1888 map that we were just looking at. So if we were looking for Grand Rapids City Hall, uh, which had been designed by the architect uh, Elijah E. Myers, who is also known for constructing the state capitol in uh, Lansing, uh, as well as the township uh, municipal building in Stockbridge and several under other uh, buildings across the United States. Um, uh, we have a picture here of uh, what Grand Rapids City Hall looked like between 1900 and 1910 that is from the Library of Congress. So it gives us a good approximation of what the uh, building would have been looking like when the 1888 map was uh, put together. So looking on uh, the index sheet, um, we see that we need to look on sheet 19 in order to find where Grand Rapids City Hall is. We then, uh, go to that sheet itself, and then we can see further details about the city as well as the other uh, streets uh, that are nearby it. Um, and then we can uh, further look in even more detailed. Uh, so this is on sheet two and see that um, other characteristics of the interior of City Hall, seeing that it's on the corners of Ionia and Lyon and Ottawa, um, and you can even see that they have stairwells and other divisions of the um, city hall building that you may not see unless you happen to have blueprints or some other sorts of uh, design characteristics that are from someplace else. But it gives you a good idea of what downtown uh, Grand Rapids is like in the area of where city hall is. Um, and unfortunately, this building was uh, demolished in 1969. So it is no longer standing. And so having these kind of maps helps us uh, see the area of where it used to exist uh, during its time period. When it comes to finding and using Sanborn maps, we'll talk a little bit about uh, where you can locate them and what sorts of forms that they come in. Um, you can certainly find both print and microfilm copies that are often found in the collections of municipal offices, as well as public academic and state library collections. So, for example, we have a uh, collection of microfilms, uh, Sanborn maps here at the Library of Michigan. If you're looking for digitized copies, uh, especially that focus on the Grand Rapids and uh, surrounding Michigan area, uh, you can certainly start with the Grand Rapids Public Library and the Grand Rapids History Center. Um, they have digitized some of their maps, including um, some early ones from 1874 to, and 1878 that we'll talk about uh, in a little bit more detail um, in just a moment. You can also find through the Library of Congress, through their online website. Um, these collections were originally purchased in the 1940s by, uh, uh, by the U.S. Census Bureau before being transferred to the Library of Congress in 1967. Um, you can also find uh, some uh, databases um, through companies like ProQuest. Um, the Library of Michigan does have a subscription to that database, um, which is available to uh, Library of Michigan library card holders. Um, uh, the one note and key difference between these maps versus some of the other ones that you would find through the Library of Congress or the Grand Rapids History Center is that they are not in color. A um, little bit of a downside, but sometimes if you can't find a map elsewhere, it is something that at least gives you an idea if a map exists and some of the details about them. 
And to go back to the uh, ones that I mentioned for, uh, through the Grand Rapids History Center, um, it's interesting with where these maps were located. So uh, several years ago in 2018, there were uh, two sets of Sanborn maps, one of 1874 and one of 1878 that were found in a house of a Heritage Hill neighborhood uh, home in Grand Rapids. Um, and they were eventually uh, given to the Grand Rapids uh, Public Library, and they have been digitized and made available online. And uh, it's amazing, you know, some of the places that you can find uh, maps. So uh, it's always good to keep an eye out to look anywhere and everywhere. Some place like uh, like these may pop up. This is just some pictures of what uh, one of those volumes looks like. This is of the 1878 one. Um, and you can see it's a fairly large uh, volume with several pages in it um, that you have to be very careful with as you're looking through it. But you can see the the color and the breakdown of uh, downtown is is quite easy to decipher. And it's a really cool you know uh, map to have been saved that is now available for re researchers to use. Um, when you're researching with Sanborn maps, there's other types of documents that you should use in conjunction with them, um, predominantly anything that lists an address. So this can be anything as far as a death record, uh, census, uh, newspaper articles, city directories, parcel cards, aerial images. Um, we're gonna take a look at an example here of uh, looking at the uh, property of a well-known person from Grand Rapids. Um, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't use an author uh, since I work at the Library of Michigan. So we're going to use Mindart de Young, um, who is a well-known children's author from the 1950s and 60s. Uh, he was originally born in the Netherlands and immigrated to the United States in 1914, um, attended uh, Calvin College, which is now Calvin University in Grand Rapids, uh, entered the University of Chicago, but left without graduating. Um, he held several jobs throughout the Great Depression and began writing children's books at the suggestion of a local librarian. Um, his first book, The Big Goose and the Little White Duck, was published in 1938. He also served in the Army Air Corps during World War II, uh, won the International Hans Christian Andersen Award, um, the first American to do so in 1962 for his contributions as a children's uh, writer. Um, and then he spelt, spent several years in Mexico, returned to Michigan, later lived in North Carolina, and then finally spent his uh, final years of his life back in Michigan before dying in 1991. Um, the first book that, of his that I was ever introduced to uh, was The Wheel on the School. And uh, one thing that you also find that's of interest with him is that six of his books were illustrated by the well-known illustrator Maurice Sendak. Um, and Several of them were Newbery Honor Books um, or Medal Winners. Um, also was the National Book Award in Children's Books in 1969 for Journey from Peppermint Street. So enough about books, let's go back to Sanborn maps. Um, if we're looking at the 1939 Grand Rapids City Directory, we can see that uh, Mr. DeYoung was living on uh, 1300 Butler Avenue Southeast in Grand Rapids, um, along with his wife, Hattie. Um, just some other examples that give that same address we can find in the 1940 census, um, also listed as uh, 1300 Butler, as well as with his draft registration card from World War II, also listing 1300 Butler, Grand Rapids, Michigan, as well as a few other details uh, about him. So using that information, we can then look on uh, the Sanborn map, uh, uh, volume three for Grand Rapids, Kent County that covers from 1913 to 1948. Um, this is on the uh, southeast side of Grand Rapids. And so in order to find where Butler Street is, um, we have to look and we eventually find where we need to look on sheet 386. We can then bring up sheet 386 and we can, as we narrow down, uh, we will find that 1300 Butler is on the um, lower left corner of, of the sheet. And we can also see the uh, various aspects of the city that is, uh, of the neighborhood of, of where 
the house is at. So Oakdale Park Christian Reformed Church is just uh, next door. And we have other different homes, uh, the intersection of Kalamazoo and Hancock, um, or just below Hall Street. And uh, if we look on an aerial map, uh, just from Google Maps, we can see that uh, the house and some of the, uh, the houses are still there. Fortunately, it looks like a few of the other buildings, um, homes that were just south of 1300 Butler are now gone, um, but it's good to see that the house itself is still there. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and uh, just show a couple of the different um, websites that I mentioned earlier and databases that show how to access different Sanborn maps. Um, we'll be first looking at the Grand Rapids Public Library's uh, Sanborn maps. Um, from there, we'll go to the Library of Congress's page. And then lastly, we'll end with the ProQuest database that is available through the Library of Michigan. So I'm going to pop out of my slideshow and First, going to the Grand Rapids Public Library, um, grpl.org. So we're going to then go to the Grand Rapids History Section, History Center portion of the website. We then scroll down and we're going to look under Digital Collections. And then look under View Collections. And when we scroll down, we will then get to where the Sanborn fire insurance maps are located. Now, these are only just the 1874 and 1878 ones. Um, so there's only 19 pages. However, this is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, one of the earliest Sanborn maps that is known about uh, Grand Rapids. So it is definitely a useful tool. When you click on it, we'll get the metadata information about it. And then we click on the sheet itself and then uh, get more details. You can scroll in and out, seeing the different specials, everything from county offices buildings, uh, city brewery, Valley City Faucet Works, and then seeing what uh, sheets and the streets that those would be on. Um, certainly interesting that you even get uh, other aspects of, what, of um, portions of uh, town that's uh, right along the river. We can also then go to the next page from here. And this brings up other aspects of downtown. And we're looking at the intersection of Division and Monroe, Ionia, get down into the details. We can see everything from grocery stores, saloon, um, confectionery, sewing machine shop, tea, um, Lots of other different uh, armory building in downtown, hotels. It's a lot of details that we may not get if we didn't have the this type of record available to look at aspects of downtown Grand Rapids. So getting out of here, we'll now go to the Library of Congress's Sanborn map page. Um, you can get to this by uh, just Googling Library of Congress Sanborn maps. Um, but up on the top, it's uh, a more lengthy uh, URL to get to. From here, there's information about how uh, about the collection, how to use it. Um, when you're wanting to look at maps themselves, we then go up here and click on collection items. Uh, from here, we can narrow things down by the time frame. We can go to different locality, um, other different aspects about it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and click on Michigan. There's uh, a little over 1,300 individual maps that are on here um, or collections of maps. Uh, to go down even further, we can click on Kent County. And then we're seeing maps, other ones of Caledonia, Cedar Springs, and then we get to Grand Rapids. Um, we'll go ahead and take a look at the volume one of the 1895 map. And you can see here, there's 112 items that are um, with this uh, particular volume. You can also pick which type of file type that you want to download it as. Um, we can click on here as well. And then we have a gallery view that lets us see multiple different maps um, as we scroll through here. 
the main index and front sheet of it tells us that volume two is in a se separate one as we're looking at volume one. And then down here is where you can pick, like I said, the file type if you're gonna download a portion of it uh, or the files. And then what we will do is we will also um, go to the Library of Michigan's page. And uh, so to get to where we have our uh, Sam Ward BAP database, you go under For the Public, and then it's uh, Online Resources for our Library Card Holders. Um, if you haven't gotten a card from us, you can then request to get one at Get a Library Card up on the top here. So we're gonna hit Online Resources for Library Card Holders, scroll down, and then Sanborn Maps right here is the link for it. And then we bring up the main Sanborn page, browse and explore, select a state. We only have Michigan uh, under our subscription. I'm gonna select a city, scroll down, pick Grand Rapids, select a date. Let's do the 1906. And like I said, unfortunately, these are only in black and white and not in color. Um, but what you can then do is scroll through the, the different sheets that are available. You can download them. Um, let's pick another year just to see what else it looks like. So this is 1895. And if there's multiple pages, you can uh, use the scroll of uh, the uh, scroll method over here on the side to go through each one. Um, if there are multiple volumes, it will also show in the drop down menu that there's volume one and volume two um, as you're looking for a particular sheet that you wish to go to. You can also print them, you can also download them or save them, download them. You can also rotate, zoom in and out in order to see them. Um, a lot of different uh, options as you're looking through these maps. So uh, at this point, uh, if anybody has any questions uh, related to what we have talked about today, uh, I will have our contact information here on the next slide. Um, so you can uh, contact the Library of Michigan by calling 517-335-1477, uh, email us at librarian at michigan.gov. We are also active on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, our main website is michigan.gov slash library of Michigan. We're located in Lansing uh, within the Capitol complex. Um, so I would encourage everybody uh, to come pay us a visit. And um, thank you for uh, attending this session for the 2023 um, History Detectives Grand Rapids session focusing on Sanborn maps. Uh, again, my name is Adam Oster and I'm the community engagement librarian. And uh, hope to see you sometime in the future at the Library of Michigan. Thank you.